Hi, my name is Louie McCurley. And as some of you may know already, I'm a longtime rope aficionado, a purveyor of safety at height, and a self-proclaimed rope addict. For those of you who are working in the fall protection and rope access industry, I wanted to make you aware of what I consider to be some pretty exciting news. That is that the ANSI Z459.1 standard on safety requirements for rope access systems, which was completed earlier this year, has finally been released. Now, this standard is part of the ANSI Z359 Fall Protection Code and outlines some foundational concepts for safe practices for rope access work that are in line with OSHA and ANSI Fall Protection Guidelines. Now, I know that many of you are already aware of the standard because a number of people have reached out to me over the last couple of weeks asking how this new standard might impact your SPRAT certification or your work at height methods uh, in, under whatever scheme you might be involved with. So I just wanted to take a moment to address that. First, though, I'd like to give some background on why I'm talking about this. My name is Louie McCurley. I'm CEO of Pigeon Mountain Industries, PMI. We're a life safety rope and equipment manufacturer right here in the United States with training offered under the banner of Vertical Rescue Solutions. But this isn't my first rodeo. I've been working for over 30 years in the interest of work at height and specifically rope safety. I've been engaging regulatory and standards efforts with OSHA, ANSI, and others since the early 1990s in an effort to get rope access accepted as a viable work practice in the United States. I was the original instigator and founder of SPRAT, the Society of Professional Rope Access Technicians, back in the mid-1990s. I've served on the ANSI Z359 Fall Protection Committee for over 20 years, and I recently had the dubious pleasure of chairing the ANSI Z459.1 Standard on Rope Access. And the ANSI Z459 Standard on Safety Requirements for Rope Access Systems has been released under the governance of the ANSI Z359 Fall Protection Code. The intent there has been to harmonize and facilitate safe work at height across all disciplines of fall protection. The ANSI standard is intended to support and legitimize the rope access work, much of which is already taking place under the proverbial radar in the United States. It certainly doesn't replace or negate anything that you're already doing, nor does it diminish the value of the fine organizations already providing rope access training and certification. It's simply a set of baseline criteria for employers to use in establishing and evaluating rope access systems for work at height. Now, ANSI Z459.1 is applicable for use in any environment where ropes are used as a primary means of access, egress, or support, and as the primary means of secondary protection against a fall. Let me say that again. The ANSI Z459 standard is not a window cleaning standard. It is not a wind turbine standard. It is not a bridge inspect inspection standard. It is not a scaling standard. It is a rope access standard. It is a fall protection standard that applies specifically to the technique that uses ropes for primary access, egress, and support at a place of work with a rope-based backup system. Now, OSHA and ANSI, they don't endorse any one training organization over another, and they can't endorse any piece of equipment over another. That's kind of a given. So if you're concerned that your specific trade organization or your specific certification, uh, the name of your certification organization is not named under the auspices of the Z459 standard, um, I'm, I'm sorry, um, that's, that's not my doing, that's not any of the committee members doing, uh, that's simply a fact that ANSI and OSHA don't promote any one organization or product. Now, that said, if you're a rope access technician who's certified as a level one, two, or three under an ISO compliant certification scheme, you can be fairly certain that your training your, for your skills already meets and likely even exceeds the training requirements found in Z459. But ANSI is not going to dictate by whom you should be certified. Now, that said, the, the standard doesn't major on training. It majors on equipment and systems. 
and it's been developed to harmonize well-established existing rope access practices with U.S. regulatory guidance that already exists in the Fall Protection Code and in OSHA regulation. Regardless of who you are trained by, regardless of what logo is on your certification card, regardless of what industry you're working in, the most important thing is that your work practices comply with well-established guidance consistent with the overall fall protection code. Now, this includes things like using a two-rope system for rope access, wearing a full body harness, limiting falls on your sternal attachments, and yes, even using connectors that are auto-locking and that have 3,600-pound gates. Now, I know this last one comes as a shock to some of you, but guess what? It's not new. It wasn't introduced in the ANSI Z459 standard. OSHA set that requirement for all fall protection back in 2016. And if you've been using non-compliant connectors since then for rope access or anything else, all I can say is count your blessings that you haven't been cited. Now, one of the other concerns that I've heard is that there are some work practices that aren't covered by the standard. Well, this is certainly true. That's actually normal in standards writing, and frankly, I would suggest that you really should want it that way. Standards generally just cover the most fundamental aspects of a practice, but they leave latitude for a qualified person to deviate when appropriate. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't do things that aren't found in the standard. It just means that whatever system you are using has to be deemed appropriate by your qualified person and that it should provide uh, equivalent safety, safety that is at least as good as the level of safety provided by what is in the standard. In that case, consider that the standard does give you, as a rope access technician or employer, a lot more ground to stand on than you've had up to now. Because up to now, nothing you're doing has been covered by an existing standard. Now, if you're concerned about what the standard says, or even if you're just wondering about it, there's a couple of things that you might consider. The first is, go on over to ASSP.org, the American Society of Safety Professionals, the uh, ASSP.org store. That's where they sell them. You can buy one. It will set you back uh, less than the cost of a good pair of boots. And you can see for yourself what all the kerfuffle is about. Or, and or, you can check out the online training at ASSP.org. It's called Working Safely at Height with Rope Access, and it goes into a lot of detail on the uh, ANSI Z459 standard, as well as into how OSHA and ANSI fit together and what it really takes to be compliant and safe. Now, I'd also like to invite you to reach out directly to me with any questions you might have. While I can't speak uh, officially on behalf of the ANSI Z459 committee or the ANSI Z359 committee, nor on OSHA, of course, uh, I do have some background in the topic and I can try to address your questions in live posts like or in posts like this one or in uh, live posts or in uh, blog posts or, or other public forums over the next few days. I would enthusiastically welcome any opportunity to clarify misconceptions or concerns about what might be in the standard so that we can get on with using it to help save lives. Thanks for joining. My name is Louie McCurley. I'm a rope safety addict, founder of the Society of Professional Rope Access Technicians, chair emerita of the ANSI Z459 committee, and a friend of rope access. My mission is to help bridge the gap between regulatory compliance and safe practices in work at height, and I appreciate your taking the time to hang out with me here today.